Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is your prayer, Pastor Bishop Sean Till, coming on just for a few minutes. This is another pop-up precept. I want to share a word with you uh, that is birthed out of my devotional time. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you, but the only reason I think it's going to be a blessing to you is because it was a blessing to me, and I want to share uh, this blessing with the partners. Now, uh, if you are a partner, I'm going to ask that you would become again a World Watch partner and go ahead and push that button that says share. And when you push that button that says share, you help us go global, international, and exponential. I would love for this word to be wrapped around the world, which means that I'm going to need your partnership in order to make that happen. Okay, so I want to share this brief word with you. Uh, let this word help carry you through the day. And then if this word blesses you and you think this word will be a blessing to someone else, push that button that says share and help us to do it. Let's pray and then let's get into the word. Father, we just love you and we bless you and we worship you again for the day. Thank you for new mercies every morning. Thank you that your compassions fail not. We bless you for the greatness of your faithfulness. You have done it again. You get the glory, you get the praise, you get the honor. Now, Holy Father, we pray, let your word run. Let your word have a free course. Let your word be glorified in the midst of those who are the hearers and the believers. We thank you that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you that this word will find your people in the right place at the right time. And we give you glory that every word you send is designed to heal us. And so in the place where we need healing, we receive your word and we praise you in advance for what you will do in us and through us according to your word. Teach us, tutor us, even by the ministry of your Holy Spirit. And we praise you for precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and we receive wisdom that comes from your word. And we give you praise, glory, and honor that it is so, and so it is. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone who agreed said, amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a praise. So, Bishop, why do you always clap after you finish preaching? Because I believe I receive when I pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all. I believe I receive when I pray. Therefore, I always come out of a prayer with a praise. Glory to God. That's not just some perfunctory formal thing. That's not just ritual. It is me giving a true expression of my faith. I believe I receive when I pray. You're coming on. Hey there, Chaplain Butler. Congratulations to you and Lady Michelle graduating with that master's degree. And Chaplain Butler has been given his own pulpit and assignment there in Oklahoma, Fort Seals. We honor you, man of God. You know we're coming to Oklahoma. We're blessing and thanking the Lord for the gospel ministry that he has given you there in the military. And we know that you are doing ministry there. And we are so excited for you and for Lady Michelle. Blessing and thanking the Lord for you, Mother Westbrook. We appreciate you, love you, thank you for your great support. You were up early with us this morning, and we appreciate your support always as a matriarch in the ministry of Prayer Everywhere International. We honor your mother. We love your mother. Keep on doing what you're doing. You are encouraging this man of God and the partners of Prayer Everywhere. So go ahead, do what you do. Push that button that says share, amen, and let's get this word out. All right, um, I saw something in Acts chapter 17 that I want to show you. Um, Acts chapter 17, just two verses, one phrase, and then let me share with you what I think the Lord showed me. Acts chapter 17, it's just two verses, one phrase. Just pay attention to this. Acts chapter 17 and verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night under Berea, who coming there went into the synagogue of the Jews. Pay attention to this phrase. Immediately sent away. Immediately sent away. Got it? Acts 17 and 10 says that Paul and Silas were immediately sent away. Okay? Now, uh, go down to verse 14. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul. Immediately sent away. 
immediately sent away. Do you see that? Immediately sent away. What is that? To be immediately sent away is to participate in a shift. Immediately sent away. The Apostle Paul is experiencing shifts in his ministry. Immediately sent away. He was here establishing himself, here doing the ministry, and then immediately sent away. Have you ever been in a shift where you were doing what you were doing and then without a lot of announcement, without a lot of runway, <laughs> without a lot of porch, immediately you find yourself being put into a different situation? The Apostle Paul is on apostolic assignment. And when you are on apostolic assignment, you must be prepared to deal with shifts. When things immediately change on you, it's a shift. When you are moving from where you want to be to somewhere you don't even know where you're going, it's a shift. Every spiritual leader must understand not only leadership, but leadership. Leadership is often knowing how to lead others into a shift, leading others into something that immediately comes upon their life. They have to respond to it. And as leaders, we have to help people go through shifts. A part of leadership is helping people go through shifts. The most impact you will ever have in someone's life is when you minister to them while they're going through a change, while you're ministering to them while they're going through a transition, while you minister to them while they're going through a shift. So when you show up, perhaps you show up to a funeral, you show up to a graveside, what happens there? Your impact is magnified. Why? Because you're showing up at a time when someone's going through a shift. You show up to the graduation. Your appreciation for being there is magnified. Why? Because you showed up while somebody was going through a shift. You show up to the wedding and they're so excited that you're at the wedding and your presence is magnified at the wedding. Why? Because you showed up when someone was going through a shift. You come to the hospital, you stand by that bedside, and you are greatly appreciated. Why? Because you showed up while someone was going through a shift. You're there while they're going through the divorce. They appreciate you. Why? Because you showed up while they were going through a shift. Some of the greatest impact you will ever have as a leader is when you are helping lead people through a shift. If you got it, let me know you're getting it. Hands up, hearts up. Let me know you got that because I got to shift on to something else. I was um, um, uh, watching my son, uh, uh, SJ, Sean Jr., preparing to go to work. And he was coming through the house uh, on his way to work. Uh, praise God for a young black man, dutifully, gainfully, faithfully employed. And he's a hard worker. And so uh, he's on his way out the door, uh, headed to his job. And I say to Sean Jr., uh, have a good shift. <laughs> said that to my son on the way out. I, I, I said, have a good shift. And, and I showed up this morning because I want to say to you what I said to my son, have a good shift. I want you to go through your change and your transition with the grace and the goodness of God on it. I don't want you having to go through a rugged time, a rough time, as you are shifting into the next thing that God has for you. I want you to have a good shift. In fact, if you can post that right now, just tell somebody, have a good shift. For, for whatever you're about to go into immediately, for whatever is about to be the change and the transition in your life, I speak on you, have a good shift. Wave at somebody across the internet world and tell them, have a good shift. Now, if you're going to have a good shift, 
There's some things I want you to pay attention to. I got five things I want you to pay attention to if you're going to have a good shift. If you're going to have a good shift, there is a H, a, a S, a H, a I, a F, and a T that you need to pay attention to. If you're going to have a good shift, let me give you five things that are going to help you have a good shift. Number one, if you're going to have a good shift, then you need to see potential in people and in places. If you're going to have a good shift, if you're going to go through this change with the grace and the goodness of God on it, then you need to see the potential of other people in other places. We don't shift well if we don't see potential that is ahead of us. It's not just you seeing the potential that is in yourself. You want to see the potential that is in other people. You want to see the potential that is in other places. In Acts chapter 17, they're in Berea, but they're going to have to make a shift. They're in Thessalonica, but they're going to have to make a shift. They're going to have to go into Ephesus. They're going to have to make a shift. They're headed into Athens. They're going to have to make a shift. But every time Paul shifts, Every time he is immediately sent away, you will notice that he goes into the next place seeing the potential in other people and in other places. I know where you are, but if the Lord shifts you, he's going to let you see potential in the people where you're headed. If the Lord is shifting you, he's going to let you see the potential in the place where you're headed. Your potential is not limited to where you are right now. Your potential is not limited to the crew that is around you right now because everybody in your circle may not be in your corner. And so the Lord knows how to shift you, but when he shifts you, you must see the potential in other people and in other places. Then secondly, if you're going to shift, here's what you need to do. You need to have a plan that requires faith. If you want to have a good shift, you need to see the potential in other people and in other places. If you're going to have a good shift, then you need to have plans that require faith. Now, if you're planning something and it doesn't require prayer, stop that. If you're planning something and it doesn't require God to get involved with it, stop it. If you're making plans and you can handle all the plans that you're making, your plans don't require faith. You need to make plans that require God getting involved. You need to have plans that will require the Holy Spirit having to endorse. You want to have plans that are going to stretch your faith. You need plans that are going to make sure that you are tied in to a Jeremiah 29 and 11. The Lord says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans for good and not for evil. I'm going to bring you into a future. I'm going to bring you into a hope. I'm going to set you in your expected end. When you get ready to shift, make sure you have plans that require faith. And if you're planning anything, then it does not require faith. Stop it. Because the Bible says whatsoever is not of faith is sin. What did you just say? I didn't say it. The Bible said it. <laughs> whatsoever is not of faith. Romans 14, 23. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you're planning something and you don't need faith to get through the planning, then you need to stop whatever you're planning because whatever you're planning is coming short of the glory of God. I need you to get that. If you're going to have a good shift, or oh, I want you to have a good shift, then you need to see the potential in other people in other places. If you're going to have a good shift, then you need to have plans that require faith. If you're going to have a good shift, then you need to invest in your own personal and private development. You need to invest in your own personal and private development. If you're going to have a good shift, you need to invest in your own personal and private development. You know God has more for you. You know where you are right now more than likely. Everything in you is screaming. God's calling me to the bigger. God's calling me to the greater. 
I want to get into the larger. All right. That that's your that everything in you is screaming that. Well, you know what you need to do in this season before you are immediately sent away, before you go in through this shift, you need to invest in your own personal and private development. When nobody's looking, work on you. You ain't said nothing. When nobody's looking, work on you. God is doing something fresh in your life. When nobody's looking, work on you. Read the book, not just the chapter. Read the book. Work on your own personal and private development. Get you a daily devotional discipline. Work on your personal and private development. Go back and work on your skill set because God is going to shift you. You're working for somebody. Soon somebody's going to be working for you. You need to be working on your own personal and private development. Invest in you. You invest in others. Invest in yourself. You pour time into others. Pour some time into yourself. You have no problem helping others with money. You need to invest in yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Invest in yourself so you can begin to invest in others. If you're going to have a good shift, if you're going to go through a change and a transition with the grace and the goodness of God upon it, then you need to see the potential in other people, in other places, you need to have plans that require your faith. You need to invest in your own personal and private development. And then you need to forgive yourself and forgive others. You will not have a good shift if you do not forgive yourself and forgive others. When you get ready to shift, you need to know that there's going to be some debris left in the shift. You may not get it all right. You may have to transition because you didn't get it all right. You may have to move out of a relationship, move out of a room, move out of a season, move out of a situation because of some failure of your own. It could be that. I know it's hard to imagine, but it could be you. Maybe you did make a mistake. <laughs> Maybe you did fumble the ball. But listen, going into this next transition of your life, Forgive yourself and forgive others. Forgive yourself. I should have put a, a, a dot on that eye. Forgive yourself. I should have crossed that T. Forgive yourself and then forgive others. Forgive others. They weren't there for me when I needed them the most. Forgive them. They said things about me that weren't even true. Forgive them. They could have been there for me. Forgive them. They know they had the money when I needed it and they didn't even ask me, could I, could, could, did I need the help? Okay, forgive them. They didn't do everything you thought they should have done. They didn't help you transition. They didn't help you shift. They didn't pour into you like they, you think they should have poured into you. Okay, but you're in a shift now. So in the shift, you can't take all of the debris from the past into the present. You got to give that stuff up. So you can move into your future. So you can shift. And you want to have a good shift. But you can't have a good shift unless you forgive yourself and forgive others. But then finally, if you're going to have a good shift, see the potential in other people in other places. If you're going to have a good shift, have plans that require your faith. If you're going to have a good shift, Invest in your own personal and private development. If you're going to have a good shift, forgive yourself and forgive others. If you're going to have a good shift, try something new. I'm out. That's all I got. Try something new. Try something new. You're not too old to try something new. Caleb was 85 years old asking for something new. Caleb, you're 85 years old. I know how old I am, but I want my mountain. I never had my mountain. I want my mountain. You're not too young to try something new. You haven't been in this same occupation and profession so long that you can't try something new. You can go back to school. You can do something new. You can get remarried. You can do something new. You can join a different ministry. You can do something new. 
You can shift. You can try something new. The Lord said, behold, I do a new thing. Isaiah 43, 18. Behold, I do a new thing. <laughs> Shall you not know it is about to spring forth? The Lord says, I'm going to let you try some new things. The Apostle Paul had to try some new things. He did ministry in Thessalonica. Now he's got to do a new thing. Ministry in Berea. Now he's got to do a new thing. New ministry in Athens. Now he's got to do a new thing. New uh, thing in Ephesus. Now he's got to do, do a new thing. New thing in Rome. Now he's got to do a new thing. New thing in, in, in Jerusalem. He just keeps having to do new things. He's a leader who keeps having to shift. But every time he shifts, he's not intimidated to try something new. You're sitting there looking at me right now and you watch other people and you wonder how they could be so adventurous. You watch the lives of other people, how daring they are. You watch the lives of other people and you think they're such mavericks. Maybe not. Maybe they just have a willingness to do something new. I want to say to you what I said to my own son headed out the door. Have a good shift. You're going to have to go through changes and transitions. You're looking at me right now saying, oh, man of God, you talking to me. I'm going through a change and a transition, and I want the grace and the goodness of God to land on this shift. I don't think it's my last shift, but for the shift I'm in right now, I need you to pray over me, man of God. Because I feel like I've been immediately sent away. I feel like things have changed on me suddenly. I feel like it immediately just came into my life and things are different now. If you looked at my life 12 months ago, I've shifted. If you look at my life over 30 days ago, I've shifted. I'm going through a shift right now. And I needed to hear this word, man of God. Now, if that's for you. And if I'm about to pray with you, let me know I'm praying with you. Yes, Bishop, be my prayer pastor because I'm going through a shift. I'm going through a change and a transition right now. And I need prayer because I want the grace and the goodness of God on this shift. If I'm praying with you, if I'm praying for you, let me know right now. Yes, man of God, you're praying with me. Yes, man of God. You are praying with me. Pray with me. I want to make this shift. And when I shift this time, I need to see the goodness and the grace of God on this shift. Is this for you? All right, this for you. Let's believe God together. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for the word released. Father, now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every believer hearing this word now. Spirit of the living God, help your people get through this shift. Thank you for every change and transition. Thank you, Holy Father, for the opportunity to do something different. Spirit of the living God, we need the grace of the Father and the goodness of the Lord Jesus to help us through this shift. And so, Father, we thank you that this word has prepared your people for the next shift. We ask now, Spirit of the living God, that you will get our hearts ready. We pray, steady our minds, that there be no anxiety, that there be no worry. We give you praise, glory, and honor for whatever you will do suddenly, whatever you will do immediately, it will be for us a good shift. Now we give you praise, glory, and honor that your word is going to work in this people, and we touch and agree with every yes and with every yielded heart that says, man of God, pray with me and pray for me. We do, Father God, pray with your people and pray for your people. And we believe it's already done. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone who agrees said, amen, 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 and amen. Well, glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for sharing this time with us, this pop-up preset. Go ahead and push that button that says share. 
and send this message around the world. Let it bless you. If you didn't uh, share with us this morning on the National Prayer Call, we're headed back to the National Prayer Call. You can join us. If you're on Pacific Standard Time, it will be 633. If you're on Eastern Standard Time, it will be 933 a.m. again this morning. Go ahead, get on the National Prayer Call. Let me hear your voice and be blessed by the fellowship, the worship, and the word that you will experience on the National Prayer Call. This is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Teal. Appreciate you for all that you continue to do as you support this ministry and this man of God. Help someone make a shift. Help someone see the grace and the goodness of God on the changes and the transitions that are happening right now in their life. I look forward to hearing your voice on the National Prayer Call. Once again, this is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Teal, loving you and appreciating you. Looking forward to ministry in the future.